Greetings, my YouTube and Facebook friends. Got my war gear on. We're at war right now. We are in spiritual warfare to the max. I want to share a vision with you. And you can believe what you want to believe. It's between you and the Lord. All I can do as a watchman is tell you what the Lord told me. And then go from there. If you don't believe it, hey, nothing else that I can do. I was interceding in prayer for this wicked nation of Obama land, formerly America, in this wicked world. And as has happened a few other times, the Lord grabbed me during the prayer. Usually the Holy Spirit grabs me and gives me word. This time, Jesus himself, praise the Lord, he gave me personal word. He came down, and I was standing before Jesus, right in my own house. I was trembling. I was, I was in awe. I thought, how in the world? But I knew it was Jesus. And he looked like Jesus from the pictures that we have. And I, I think it's because that's the only way we would know how he looks. I don't know how he'll look. We'll find out when we get to heaven. The only way I'd be able to recognize him is by the pictures and paintings that we see of him. <coughs> I just fell at his feet and, 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 and he embraced me and told me that he loved me and said, let's go out soul winning. So we took off and we were outside. I was walking right beside the Master, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We went to door to door. He knocked, he stood at the door and knocked. And no one would answer. Went to many doors. He would knock. You could tell people were inside the house. You could see them peeking through the curtains. You could hear them inside. They wouldn't come and answer the Master when we knocked. It was so sad. It was so heartbreaking. And it just proved to me how wicked and how sad and pathetic that the world is nowadays. Doesn't want to hear the truth about Jesus Christ. And then it got real heavy. We ended up in a huge, monstrous uh, auditorium that looks like it could seat probably 10,000 people. And it was packed to the hilt with Christians. I knew they were Christians because it was a church type of environment, and they were advertising some big revival, and Jesus was the speaker. Imagine that, going to revival and hearing Jesus Christ as a speaker. <clears throat> he was preaching to the 10,000 or so people, Christians, real Christians, and they were texting. They were checking their, surfing the net on their cell phones. They were talking about what they were going to do, go out to eat after the service was over. They were ignoring. They had they had our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ right there preaching to them, and they wouldn't listen. They were ignoring, and I was just in awe hearing Jesus talk, but I was looking and listening and seeing all this stuff, and I was thinking, how dare you people act this way? What in the world is wrong with you? Or have you lost your minds? You call yourself Christians? And all of a sudden, I heard a voice, and I know it had to be the voice of God. He said, very soon... I will send my son, Jesus Christ, back to earth to take his bride back to heaven. And then, whoa, 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 into man. I started running around. I started grabbing people and shaking them and saying, listen, do you hear that? Did you hear it? They couldn't hear God's voice. They were ignoring Jesus. I said, look, listen, listen. Time is short. Time is short. The rapture is coming. They wouldn't listen. Did you, did you hear God say he's about to send Jesus, his son, back to get us? They wouldn't listen. They were all wrapped up and absorbed in what they were doing. And that shows me, proves to me, what I've been saying for years now. The tiny, tiny remnant, the tiny amount of Christians who truly serve Jesus Christ, where the Bible says right now. The tiny amount who repent of our sins after we're saved. Jesus was preaching repentance. He was saying repent from the pulpit. These 10,000 plus people, people didn't want to hear him. People say what they want to say, do what they want to do. I've got 250 scripture, count them, an exhaustive commentary that a little child can understand that proves you have to repent your sins after you're saved. You don't listen, it's between you and God. My blinders are on again, you see them, because the church is spiritually blind. I am so tired of the apathetic, lukewarm church that Jesus said he would vomit out of his mouth because they're not hot or cold, they're lukewarm. Message me if you want a copy of that scripture. I've got 150 scripture, an exhaustive commentary that proves the rapture's pre-tribulation. Message me for a copy of that. If you don't, 
between you and the Lord. I can't do anything else for you. I'm not going to be around much longer. I don't think we do these videos. I believe the rapture is any second of any day. And, and I've got such an urgency now. Such an urgency. And I am shocked every second of the day that I'm still here. Every time that I go to bed and then wake up the next morning, both times I'm shocked. The rapture hasn't happened. I'm, I'm just so, so fed up with Christians now. And get ready to approve uh, sodomite marriage. It's coming. The Supreme Court's going to approve it. I did a video today. 2,000 pastors signed a petition to the Supreme Court saying, please legalize sodomite marriage. I love all the sodomites. I really do. I love them. I want to see them go to heaven. But I'm not going to tolerate anyone's sin, whether they're gay, straight, whoever they are. The Bible says if you're living in sin, what the Bible says is sin, which being gay is and being an adulterer, a fornicator, a liar, a thief, murderer, rapist, all that stuff is sin, regardless of what your sexual, sexual orientation is, you will not go to heaven. All I can do is put the word out. My heart is, is, is heavy. My, my heart is breaking for the lost for, and for the backslidden as well. But when I'm gone and the rest of the, the true bride is gone, the remnant, don't try to blame me. Don't try to blame us when you're stuck here. For seven years of hell on earth, it's going to rip this world to its foundations. That if God said if he didn't intervene, no flesh would, would, would remain alive as it is. About two-thirds of all the population is going to die. Horrific, terrible, awful deaths. Men's hearts will fail them due to fear. Why go through all of that? I've got a prayer in the box below the video title. Pray that prayer as soon as the video is over. Do those six vital next steps as well if you're unsaved or you're a backslider. Because no one guaranteed the next day, hour, minute, or second in their life. In that same box, my Tribulation Survival Guide video tells you how to get saved during the Tribulation and what to expect A to Z. be worth more than gold after I'm gone. If you want me to pray for you, contact me, and I will every day. True Christians, just keep looking up. Our different girl and I, we fly soon. And if those don't, if the lost will listen to us, it's in the name of the Lord. We can lead them to the holy water. We can't make them drink. Share this video with everybody you possibly can. I give you permission, and I encourage you to. Share it and get the word out, because our time is truly, truly short. Thank you for listening, and take care. Bye.